All right. Today I am talking about the evidence component of the evidence-based practice triangle. So the evidence-based practice triangle is a framework for clinicians that helps them to make good decisions using evidence for their clients. So there are three components to this framework. We've got the evidence, which typically refers to things like, you know, evidence from peer-reviewed journals and studies and things like that. There's client perspectives and then there is clinical expertise. So today I'm gonna to dive into the evidence component and talk about one thing that tends to be confusing for people within this component. So what that is, is that when people are looking at evidence and they're looking at different studies that have been published, a lot of times people will confuse case studies versus single subject designs. Now, I think the reason that people get confused is because a lot of times people think, single subject, that's just, you know, an N of one. So anything that has one participant is, you know, it's single subject, but that's actually not true. Case study versus single subject design refers to the methodology that was used in order to collect the information. So when you're looking at a case study, that is a descriptive methodology. So how that could look is that you have a client and you have gathered evidence before and after a particular intervention, and you're describing all the information. And yes, you can be using uh, data, you can be using objective measures, you can be using numbers, but you're also using other descriptive information. You might have a narrative of what you're seeing before and after the intervention. You might be describing your client's characteristics and you know what you've seen throughout that process you're just kind of telling a story of before and after. And yes, you might be using numbers and collecting data, but that is considered a descriptive design. Now, when you're talking about a single subject design, this is a, a quasi experimental methodology. And what that means is that instead of just descriptively talking about what's happening, like you would with a case study, what you're doing with a single subject design is you're using a spe specific methodology in order to compare independent versus dependent variables and look at the impact of one variable on another. So you might be looking at the impact of a certain treatment on a particular outcome. So the difference there is that when you're doing single subject, you are establishing some experimental control. So for example, how that could look, uh, there are a number of different single subject methodologies, but one of them is an ABA design. For example, uh, treatment A is administered, and then you administer treatment B, and then you administer treatment A again, for example. So, or actually condition A, condition B, and then condition A again. So you're comparing the before and after, and you're using the individual in the study as their own experimental control. So you are using some specific process in order to tell which variables had an impact on the behavior versus just describing what's happening. Now, that's just a very surface level description. There are a number of other things that you can do for single subject design, but the main thing is that they're not the same thing. One is just describing what happened and the other one is using a particular design in order to actually determine the impact of one variable on another. And obviously there are a number of different ways to do this, but the difference that you want to be aware of is that typically with single subject, it is considered a little bit more rigorous and that you are establishing experimental control. So why is this relevant for clinicians? Well, it's it's important for us to know the difference between these things because typically when we are able to use a more rigorous design and establish experimental control, then what happens is that we are able to eliminate some of the bias. Another thing that people sometimes get confused about is that with single subject design, they think that it has to be only one subject or one participant. That's not true. There can actually be a very small group of participants, but you can have more than one with a single subject design. So that's something that people confuse as well. Um, so that's just something else to note. But the main thing is that these two things are different. And if you are looking at a study, you want to be able to understand the difference because one doesn't 
um, doesn't necessarily establish that control and look at a specific variable, and then the other one might. So it's really important to know the difference between these things because if we are going to be good clinical scientists and also be able to evaluate research so that we can make good decisions for our clients, it's good to be able to evaluate the information coming in and know how well a study was done when we're, when we're actually reviewing that information. So I hope you found this helpful in my next video. I am going to be talking about some other common misconceptions when it comes to the evidence-based practice triangle.